To convert this kit into a Ugandan M4 Sherman, the turret needed to be modified into an ex-Israeli M4 Sherman, starting with making a gun mantlet cover like the one on screen. I first had to make the cover frame made out of 0.6 styrene rod and other bits of sheet styrene and using Tamiya extra thin cement to attach the plastic parts. Once dried, I mixed together standard milliput that was then shaped with a sculpting tool to form the fabric. The other modification to the turret included making a searchlight bracket on top of the main gun, reflecting the vehicle's previous service life. In the comments section below, you will find the link to a tank encyclopedia article on the history of Uganda's use of the M4 Sherman, most notably under the rule of the infamous Ugandan dictator General Idi Amin Dada and its use during the 1978-1979 to 1979 Ugandan-Tanzanian War, which led to the overthrowing of Amin. And now it's time to paint the model. two coats of the dark green paint mix. A few drops of yellow was then mixed into the paint mix, which was lightly brushed over the raised areas, such as hatches, engine covers and other raised parts to simulate highlights. A similar painting process was then used to paint up the turret, with the only difference being the painting of the canvas gun mantlet cover in various shades of grey-brown paint to mimic the colour of the fabric. The decals were generated in Adobe Photoshop, which were then printed onto white decal paper, with three layers of micro-scale decal film being applied, with 24 hours between each coat. Once cured, the custom decals were applied in the usual way. Unfortunately, the green colour of the V marking decals did not match the painted model. This was then fixed by painting the set decal with a green paint mix using a steady hand and a thin roundhead paintbrush. To make some red earth pigments, I ground up some hard chalk pastels in order to recreate the dusty look of a Ugandan M4 Sherman, like the one you can see on screen. To fix the chalk dust, I applied a little bit of decal setting solution before brushing over the powder in the areas as seen in the screenshot. The powder was also brushed over the tracks in the same way. Once cured, the tracks were then glued onto the hull. The uniforms of 
Ugandan tank crews under the reign of Idi Amin was a mixture of World War II surplus US tank crew uniforms and Soviet equipment. So I decided to paint up a few figures from the kit and the Rubicon models World War II US tank crewmen as Ugandan tank crewmen. also made a roadside diorama for this model, depicting the outskirts of Kampala circa April 10th to 11th 1979, where the last operational Ugandan M4 Sherman tanks were used in a last ditch defence of Kampala against the advancing Tanzanian forces. In this clip depicting the Tanzanian army's advance on the city of Jinja, Uganda at the end of the 1978-1979 to Uganda-Tanzania war, I found this brief shot of this cigarette advertising billboard that welcomes careful drivers to Jinja. This amazing sign was something that I had to adapt for my diorama. Taking a screenshot, I was able to replicate the look of said sign in Adobe Photoshop, with the only adaptation being the city's name. Once done, it was printed off onto white inkjet decal paper. The advertising billboard was made from various parts of evergreen sheet styrene. Once made, the sign was painted up and then the decal was applied in the usual way. A power pole was also made out of styrene rods and strips. Still the water was made using Woodland Scenics Realistic Water, with a few drops of Vallejo Game Color Wash mixed into the water mix, which was applied via an eyedropper with the air bubbles removed before drying. And with that, the diorama was completed. It's now time to say goodbye. Good luck with all your ongoing projects, and thank you for watching.